Hey guys, welcome to the Whip Workshop, the brand new show on the channel that you guys absolutely loved. Got heaps of requests and heaps of good praise from the show, so here's episode 2 and many more to come. Of course, this show is all about you guys submitting your own work in progress pictures and builds, and I'm going to have a little bit of a chat about them, say how I think you could possibly advance the build a little bit further, as well as just give a little bit of advice, a few of my own ideas and things like that for you to advance this build further. And on top of that too, watching and seeing some of the whip photos of other people's stuff is always very informative and helpful. You get a little behind the scenes photos and little snippets and peeks into how exactly other people can build stuff. And also you might get inspired yourself by watching this. And that's what we're all about on this channel. So let's begin with episode two of the whip workshop. The first mock that we're going to be talking about today is by Maniac Mox. And I, well, this is quite obviously an Umarak the Hunter revamp of some kind. Very, very awesome mock. So it seems that uh, there's a little bit of a paint job on this mask to some degree. I, it might just be the lighting on that photo. I don't think it is. It looks like he's painted the side there, adding in that little bit of red there. Pretty cool. I've said it before in Biss episodes and stuff. It's always kind of cool to reinterpret a character a little bit when you're revamping them. And a little paint job on the mask is a, is a, is a nice little addition there. A great way of doing just that. So that's pretty cool. Also really like the sort of pistons and it's not really like the official Lego pistons, but just the, the like these bones and these tubes and things here on the legs. You know, Umarak the Hunter is this kind of cool like hunter, bounty hunter kind of guy. And I imagine that he kind of collects things and enhances himself so that he can be, you know, in top physical condition so that he can hunt and destroy exact, you know, in the best way possible. And so I kind of like these little additions here like that. It kind of looks like he's upgraded his legs a little bit. He's got these tubes in here. Maybe it's some sort of exosuit or some sort of like performance enhancing drugs that are being pumped through his body, which is terrifying, but um, it's pretty, it pretty cool. I kind of like that. I think it's a fun little addition there. I like what's, uh, what's going on there. It's pretty cool. On that, something I think would be really cool when you continue uh, with this whip here, how I was talking about those sort of enhancements or things that he's collected or ways that he's improved himself over his bounty hunting career of or however you want to describe that. One thing I think could be really cool is very similarly to this mock, which is a mock that you're going to see in a future Biss episode. I probably won't have the episode out by the time that you see this Whip Workshop episode, but this mock is by Aaron Van Cleese and is this really awesome Taraga mock, and he's got all these fun little trinkets and things here along his waist, you know, all these, all these like a map, a little frog that he's caught, all sorts of stuff like that. Now, I wouldn't necessarily say this exact design is what you could give Umarak here, but it'd be really interesting if he had little things like maybe he's collected some masks, or he's collected some weapons, or, you know, little trinkets or things from the, the, the people that he's killed, the people that he's hunted down, the beasts that he's, you know, he's, he's, he's hunted and tamed and that sort of thing. You know, maybe he's got a, a big tooth or a big horn or, you know, uh, the hide of a, of, a, of a cool beast or something like that. He's got little trinkets along the side there. And the perfect thing to do, much like we see in this uh, awesome Turaga mock here, would be to use some system pieces there to get some of those interesting prizes and trinkets that he's got from his past hunts and uh, his past wins and kills and stuff. I think that'd be really interesting and a great way to kind of add a lot more detail and add a little bit more pizzazz to this, because um, it's awesome as it is so far, but I reckon those little details like that would really, really do something cool to this mock, so I like that idea. Plus two, his name is of course Umarak the Hunter, so of course he needs some pretty cool weapons, I certainly think so, so, you know, maybe a little bit of a quiver or a bow, similar to what he had before, that might be uh, interesting to see how you could advance that in some fashion, or maybe you just want to give him some different blades, or maybe even some kind of like pirate pistols, or some sort of you know, intricate blasters or something like that, you know, he is a hunter, I'm sure he might have some sort of big game hunting guns, you know, that might be interesting, that might be cool, might be fun to build. Something else you could do is kind of play off some of the bounty hunters you might see in Star Wars, or just from other sort of sci-fi, you know, pop culture stuff, so, I don't know, maybe he's got some sort of cool hat, or maybe he's got a kind of Boba Fett cloak or something, you know, some sort of awesome cowl or something like that, that could be really fitting to the character, but that said, what you've got so far, I think, kind of works as is. Maybe, maybe he could have some kind of loincloth, or or even something kind of similar to kind of having more sort of tribal-like details. You know, the fact that he's got those big horns on his head and he's also kind of got those bear cage claw things on his shoulders and stuff. He does sort of have that element to him of he's living in the jungle or he's kind of, you know, taking things and putting them on himself to kind of blend in and camouflage himself to some degree. So he might actually have a kind of more kind of tribal look or 
maybe some kind of camouflaged elements to him. You know, maybe maybe something a little bit like this. He sort of has those more kind of interesting additional kind of tribal details, this sort of more cloth design, maybe like a waistcoat or a loincloth or something. Could be interesting to play around with. Might not be the aesthetic that you're going for. I think you kind of have this sort of more armoured look than that, but it might be an interesting pathway to at least consider. You know, you, you never know what might work until you try it. So um, yeah, give that a go if that's something that you're interested in. One thing that I think is also something to maybe consider as well is with the official set, of course, he had the option to combine with some of those, uh, with, with some of the, the, the beasts, you know, with the whole Uniter concept. And I think more traditionally, you could combine him with Liwa's specific Uniter beast. Uh, and so that gave him the cool trans green wings. So maybe that's something to consider too. Do you want to give Umarak uh, those wings? Because, you know, that could look cool. But again, I actually think he looks better without wings. But that said, the set did look pretty cool when you put the uh, the wings on his back there. But, um, yeah, that's something to consider. Maybe you do want to go that route or maybe you don't want to go that route. Said both pronunciations of that word. Um, so that's something to think about. And then something else that I think could be cool as well is maybe uh, maybe kind of make him look a little bit like Infus Nest just because uh, he's a pretty cool character. Um, and I think I think elements of that character also do sort of fit itself well with what Umarak has. That sort of uh, just that just that look. I don't know how quite how to describe that, but uh, I think I think uh, I think the two characters are, are decently similar. And maybe too, you could give him a, a cool kind of. Uh, gang, much like the Cloud Riders to the Infus Nest, you know, maybe, maybe Umarak has some cool thugs with a similar colour scheme, and he's got some sort of henchmen that uh, help him hunt and stuff. That could be something uh, interesting to consider, inter something something interesting to do, I kind of like that idea. So there you go, there's some of my thoughts on how you could continue forward with this mock. I love what you're doing so far with this, it's very, very cool. Some awesome changes to the colour scheme, uh, and some awesome stuff going on so far, so keep up the great work, looking forward to seeing where this mock ends up. So, the second mock that we've got so far is by MRT.Mox, and this is his whip so far. Of course, this is not named, but this is the whip. So something I love about this, you've made a start. It's so easy to work from here on. You've made a simple frame, and I always find that it's so much easier to work off of frames. You know, when I when I built my first spaceship mock, uh, or at least my sort of first proper spaceship mock, I made heaps of spaceships when I was a kid, but when I sort of sat down, I was like, I want to build a really, really solid one. I didn't know where to start. It was so difficult for me um, for some reason, and now it's a bit easier, but at the time, I was like, I don't know where, I don't know, I don't know where to start. Like, how do I begin this? And then I kind of just had the thought of like, you know, the easiest thing for me when I'm building is to add details to stuff. And I was like, man, I wish I could just get to that detail stage now, but I don't know how to do that. I need to actually start with this spaceship. And then I just found myself saying like, I wish I had the frame already and then I could build the details around it. And I was like, oh, that's actually where I need to start, isn't it? And so then I built the frame, which is very, very simplistic and just a sort of bunch of technique beams and stuff. And then from there, I started to build the details around it. And then I had a spaceship and I was like, oh, that was easy. Um, and more or less, that's what you can do with a mock, you know, it, it may not be the specific way that you build, but hey, if you need to build a frame and then you can detail around that, and that's the best way for you to start, perfect. And so, well done you for getting a frame up and ready, because now you can just add the details to it, and that's the fun part, that's the awesome part. So, you are in a good place, good sir. So if you're like me with uh, my spaceship example there, if you find it a little bit hard to find a specific starting point, then just make a simple frame. Don't even think about the details yet. Just just figure out a frame, work out some proportions and stuff like that, and just work off of that. And then you can always detail things up later. You can also kind of just work off the natural connection points that sort of form from this armor. And that's definitely my, my advice to you there, Mr. Uh, MRT.mox is just to pick the specific connection points that you currently have on this frame and just find pieces that kind of work off of that. You know, there's some ball joints on the Hero Factory parts, there's some axle holes in multiple places on this mock. So just find the different ways that you can actually connect stuff to that and just see what pieces connect and just, just simple trial and error there, just sort of see like, okay, does this work? Nope. Does this work? Nope. Does this work? Aha! And then you keep going from there. And that's the other thing too, if you need to sort of change up specific areas because there just aren't any connection points, or maybe you come up with a really cool leg design and you're like, ah, oh, this would work really well on this, but not with the little frame that I've got, then just substitute it out, just switch out what you currently have for what's going to work a bit better, you know? But I often find that too, just having that frame in front of you makes things so much easier because you can just sort of, it kind of helps you to better visualize it, I guess. You're like, okay, it's going to be roughly this size. The arms are going to come in this way. Okay, well then the torso needs to look like this. Whereas if you have absolutely nothing, it's harder to work off. As I always say, version one is better than version none. So rather build the frame so you have something to work off. I think that's awesome, man. So really, really cool start so far. Things seem pretty well proportioned too on this as well. It's always a good thing with uh, building a frame. You can figure out the proportions here. Um, the only thing I'm not too sure about, it's a little hard to tell with the pictures. Uh, typically, in terms of proportions, the hands are about sort of midway 
up the thigh. That's kind of just how normal proportions work. And it looks that that's about the case on this. It's a little bit hard to tell. I'm not sure if the thigh is maybe a little bit too short or possibly you could remove that friction joint there on the elbows and then it might sort of help with that but it is a little bit confusing with those claws because it's harder to tell where the arm finishes or ends but honestly man that's besides the point you don't have to be perfectly proportions if you don't want to you know i've seen countless amazing mocks that actually aren't like normally proportioned if you look at normal human proportions and it still looks perfectly fine and that's okay and sometimes too you want to build your own original race of an original character and they have, you know, longer arms, they have longer legs, or they have a different shaped arm or leg or body or something like that. That's totally okay. So you don't have to be perfectly proportioned if you don't want to be. But if that's what you're aiming for, that would be uh, my advice there, is just kind of play around with that. Or at least just study a proportions picture and just sort of compare it with the frame and stuff. That's something to consider. So it is a little bit harder to know the direction that you're going with this. You just sent me the pictures. I, you didn't give me any specific stuff that you wanted me to discuss on this, which is totally fine, man. But um, in terms of what I'm seeing so far on the mock, you know, obviously it's very early in the design stage, but he's got this sort of silver black with little bits of red uh, throughout the color scheme. I assume the red is... Maybe the red could be a placeholder as you look for just black ball joints, but um, yeah, let's just say the red's in there for now. Um, so maybe adding a bit more red in is, is a good starting point. There's already that little bit of highlight of red. Maybe you could find a little bit, you know, a few more areas where there could be some red on there. So maybe, maybe taking a look at some red parts, see how that could sort of uh, help the mock in some fashion. Also, I think finding a mask this early on in the design might be really helpful. You know, maybe having a really strong idea of how his head will look will be a great way for you to start informing what the character's going to look like, what he's going to, kind of what his personality is, you know. So maybe pick out some masks, maybe a red mask, maybe Tahu's mask, something like that, could work. And so he currently has these demon claws, I think that's definitely also another good starting point, because that's very informative for this character. Um, so, I saw this mock, so maybe you could go a little bit like this route. So I think th uh, this is a mock by the awesome Gringat the Repugnant, and I really, really like this mock that Gringat's made, because it has this slightly sinister vibe to it, because of the darker colour scheme and the claws and things like that, but it's complemented with the soft blues and the sort of feminine, softer Nakama mask there, and there's kind of this interesting juxtaposition between the sort of more evil, sinister elements with the sort of sharper edges and stuff, but then it has a very sort of smooth, rounded sort of aesthetic to it, and so it's it's sort of lighter, but also sort of more sinister. So maybe if you're going for more of a Toa, kind of noble knight, maybe you could uh, be a little bit more inspired by Gringat here and do something a little bit similar to that. But if you want to go a little more demon, then maybe you could look into this specific mock. Um, obviously, the legs on this are uh, very, very different to what you have, but I think there's a couple elements on this that you could very easily take a few notes from that I think are, are pretty awesome. You know, he's got these cool sort of Doc Ock, Iron Spider kind of appendages things here with all these wires and things like that. He's got that cool tail. You could add those specific elements onto the mock, those cool appendages and that tail, just for a really sort of interesting kind of accent point. And I think that would blend and lend itself very nicely to those claws that he currently has. Um, so if you kind of want to continue that across on the mock, that's maybe something to consider and something that would make this mock really cool and really unique. So yeah, I think that would, uh, yeah, there's some, there's some ideas there for how you could advance this mock a little bit further. But uh, like I said before, really awesome that you've already started with making a frame on the mock that's going to help you a lot in the long run. Awesome stuff. So let's move on to the final mock in the whip workshop. And this is a mock by Construction Diva. And uh, of course it doesn't have a name. Well, if it does have a name, I'm not saying the name because I don't do that on the show. I'm so used to saying names for mocks because of this guys. It's, <laughs> it messes with me every time. Um, but here it is. Here is the mock by Construction Diva, which is currently a whip. So what I love so much about this is the awesome orange accents on this. Really, really pops up against the black and mostly blue color scheme. There's little bits of dark blue in there, but I assume you're going to replace those with blue. It kind of looks like those pieces are placeholders at the moment. But that said, adding in a bit of dark blue, I don't think would be that big a deal. Um, so I kind of like it if that's the intent, and I like it if it's not the intent too. I think both ways work really, really well. I also really like the tail, the little light on the end there, I think is really cute. This kind of looks like this sort of robot dog, or robot kitty, or how, which, uh, whichever. Um, and I think that little light on, on the end there kind of gives this really cool kind of like futuristic android look to it that, you know, the company's installed a light on the end of the tail. I don't know. It, it says a lot to me. I really like that a lot. I also really like the the little um, tile studs with those sort of orange studs under them that connect into the Nuva shoulders there. Really, really like those. Those do a lot there. I think that's cool. Again, it kind of makes it look a little bit more robotic, gives it a, a, a really interesting look. I think it's pretty cool. And the paw design, very, very simple but very, very cool. I like that a lot. It's a great use of that part. So this actually reminds me a lot of this mock, which is a mock that I actually helped make uh, in person. My friend uh, Felix the Cat, we made this ages ago. 
Um, and it's, it just instantly reminded me of that because it's very, very similar. They're both cats. They're both blue. <laughs> uh, and they don't have heads. So <laughs> there you go. Um, so it reminded me a lot of that. So maybe you could do much like this mock and add a heck load of guns on its shoulders or something like that. That could be really fun and uh, very, very funny. Very cool. Um, and you could even do like us and not actually give it a head, make it a kind of drone, like Android Kitty, more kind of robotic, and it kind of just maybe has like a, a single like mono eye for a head. Um, and yeah, it's sort of more robotic. Maybe it doesn't need a sort of pronounced like larger head of some kind. Um, that could be interesting. That could be kind of cool. Although either way, I reckon it'd be cool actually now that I look at it again to extend that orange tube out onto the head in some fashion. If, if that means you have to add a, a secondary orange tube, then then do so. But I think that'd be cool just to kind of have that orange tube kind of draw your eye throughout the mock so that it leads you to the head and stuff. That'd just be some cool sort of visual storytelling that would be really helpful, I think. That'd be cool. But if you are preset on making a head design, I would recommend taking a look at Alira's, Alira's, Alura's, Amura, Pura, Bura's. Because I still don't know how to pronounce her name. Good old Molly. Take a look at Molly's awesome panther mock. Because that head design is so cool. And this panther mock is so cool. I need to do a this episode on animals again and do a panther. Ep- put this in it because I love it. I want to talk about this a lot, but I'm already running late on time. So, maybe take a look at this panther head design here because it's pretty cool. Using those um, uh, those claw pieces there for eyes, I definitely think would work on your mock too. Although maybe you want to go something a little more like a stud or something so that it's a little more sort of like rectangular and looks a bit more robotic. That might be... That might, uh, that might be fitting. Another thing that you could also possibly take some notes from is... Uh, Bit of a bit of a bit of Transformers inspiration here, perhaps. Uh, maybe adding in some butt cannons or some butt um, sort of rockets or something like that. So maybe he's got some cool like attachments and things that can kind of go on him. So you could put those guns on, but they're not a permanent addition. It's sort of like a you know you've got all these different gun attachments or you know like rocket launchers or missiles or something that you can kind of put on his back and he has all these different attachments and stuff. That could be kind of cool. It could be an interesting way to advance it forward. Um, but that said, I do really like the sort of smooth aesthetic that you've got. But that, that, that said, adding the rockets wouldn't disrupt that in any fashion. I think it would just make it really fun and really cool. Um, and that too, just ra- uh, Ravage in general is a very sort of sleek robotic dog. It's not actually... It is a dog, but yours is kind of more of a cat. I don't know. Yours could actually work as either animal. It doesn't really matter. Um, but I think a lot of the designs from him very much fit your mock too. So uh, take a look at some of those uh, sorts of uh, things and maybe that can inspire you. But anyway, that's my advice. Take it or leave it. I don't care if you you sit here and you're like, oh, that's I didn't I did no, I'm not doing any of that. That's okay, man. I was just uh, I was just I was just offering my, my advice. You know, you do you, man. I don't mind. So yeah, that's it for the whip workshop for this week. If you want to submit some of your own stuff to the show, the whip workshop or bis, you of course can. You can do so through the email that you're currently seeing on your screen right now. Just send me a few pictures, and if there's something you specifically want me to talk about, or you're something you're specifically struggling on with your whip, be sure to just throw that into the email as well. I will not accept submissions on anything else except the email, just so that it's a bit easier for me to catalog everything and that I don't miss out on your submission. So please do not hesitate if you have a whip that you are currently working on and you need some help or some advice for how to advance it further. This has been the Whip Workshop. Happy building, guys. I'll see you in the next episode.